That's beautiful. So um, this is Lokesh Jayaswal from India. Now, as shown in the video, we've seen that um, forest landscape restoration took place at a massive scale, covering large areas of the state of Telangana and in India. There was obviously a lot of support from the IS political level. However, from experiences in many other landscapes, this is not always the case. So in this context, the following lesson learned was identified. Strong political support makes all the difference. Now, Lokesh, can you explain the situation in Telangana and how political support could be mobilized, including governmental, private sector, and civil society supporting to work for a common cause? Yeah, good evening to all. Telangana is the youngest uh, state uh, uh, in India. Actually, it was formed in the year uh, June 2014. And the reason was, you can say, the political, economic, and social neglect, which was done by the other part of the combined state. Apart from that, there used to be like, uh, because of poverty and all, uh, next light activities, that is, uh, you can say, the arms struggle kind of thing and which has actually resulted in the degradation of the forest and encroachment and other uh, problem inside the forest area. After formation of the new state, the chief minister of Telangana, because he also used to be uh, residing nearby the forest area, and he had the vision that business as usual will not do. And he wanted to have the economic development with the uh, environmental concern. And that was the reason, actually, he almost had a workshop for three days uh, with all the, like, his ministers, all the departments, forest department, and how to talk out a plan in which the degraded forest can be restored. And after that emerged the state flagship program, which is Telangana Ku Harita Haram, that is green garlanding to the state. Uh, because it was a strong political will and leadership from the uh, elected, uh, democratically elected uh, head of the state. So all these cabinet ministers, all the public representatives, right from the state to the district to the uh, local, uh, local uh, bodies, either it is urban or rural, everybody was actually taken into conference and uh, all stakeholders, I can say, like uh, from the people representative side, from the non-government organization, from all the departments, then all the industries, all the school and other uh, institutions, all were actually taken into the hold of this program. And the program was to develop the forest, which was degraded, and second, mass afforestation outside the forest area. So you can say the entire landscape of the state was taken into the consideration as such. And that was the massive uh, plan from the head of the state, and which actually resulted into uh, taking into consideration all the stakeholders. They were brought into this massive uh, uh, restoration program. And that also resulted into the strong institutional mechanism. Because head of the state himself was taking review at every fortnight. And we had the video conference, you can say, by the 
bureaucracy head and then the district head down below and regular monitoring not only for planning for all other like restoration activities was taken up throughout the year like earlier it used to be like uh, during the monsoon season one day program by the head of the state to do some afforestation program at some locality and that used to be the end of it but this program ran throughout the year marching throughout the year and because the state of the uh, head of the state was involved so there was total financial inclusion as such uh, at no point of time like uh, there was dearth of money to carry out what was planned in a year right. and at the same time there was a mechanism of uh, you can say um, making a wide uh, awareness program capacity building of all rank of the people or the NGOs or the local uh, uh, people as such who were involved actually in this program and that also resulted actually actually used to give the you can say the incentives in terms of uh, uh, some medals during the state functions right from the village level serpent up to the state level functionaries as such right from NGOs or you can say the industries everybody was robbed in and actually individual all individual used to have a you can say the citation and a uh, uh, praise and uh, giving the recognition to them and this brought actually the ownership among all the people oh. yeah i was going to ask you a second question about the mechanisms in place um that is or that's being developed by the government or other stakeholders to maintain um, or even further improve what we have and or the quality of the landscape and um, on the long run but you've uh, you've mentioned some of it do you have one or two others that you want to include yeah now actually uh we can say like the first phase is for four years already over now we are into the second phase yeah. uh and for this actually the mechanism is made actually more uh, uh you can say stringent in the sense like we have the uh rule act in which the gram panchayat is the elected body and all so they have been given the task to do their forestation and if the survival is less than 85 percent action may be taken against them and it is again uh, applies for the urban local bodies also and according like for the forest areas also we are actually going for the second phase of uh, you can say like the fral activity inside the forest area wow. to take all the density classes into consideration and move ahead to meet the bone challenge as such and in fact actually in our state so far we have already achieved uh, 0.3 million hectare of uh, uh, restoration of the degraded forest and as far as india goes i think we have a 13 uh, million hectare up to 2020 wow. and then uh, 8 million hectare by 2030 wow. as per the discussion with the ministry uh, the report which was given last year already 9.8 million hectares already achieved from the india side and our prime minister actually has announced a further of 5 million hectare apart from this 21 hectare to be achieved by 2020, 2030 wow. so that would be an additionality as such which was announced actually recently in the UNCCD COP14 at Delhi. Naneva, thank, thank you very much for the insights. We appreciate you. So I will still want to emphasize that all those lessons are not just peculiar to all these countries or the regions. They are lessons that could be relevant in our various countries and regions and different landscapes. So if they have been able to do it in one way or the other, then that means it makes the work easier for other people when they could fall back on those lessons and implement it in their various countries or landscapes. So now we are...